Oh, shit. Good evening again, gentlemen. Uh, continuation of the last video. I don't know if I'll get this thing done this evening now. It's getting late, but uh, here's the parts list, and there's an X by everything, so I assume that means that I have everything. Yeah, um, alright, so this is the GG Labs A2 SCSI kit. Um, I wasn't given this, I paid for it myself, so if it causes me trouble, I'm going to say so. But uh, this is a clone of one of the Apple SCSI cards, and what you get in the kit, I don't remember if it's available pre assembled or not. It may only be available as a kit, or maybe I'm thinking of the phaser. I don't remember. Anyway, what you get is the board. Yeah, it's got a place for a serial number. He must offer them uh, assembled. You get the board, you get a ROM, and you get a couple of programmable logic devices. I assume those are gals or something. Um, and uh, you have to supply the rest of the parts yourself, uh, which is fine. Um, it uses a RAM and a ROM that are still available. Um, it uses a SCSI controller chip. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's an AMD SCSI controller chip. What is that? Uh, 5380 SCSI controller chip. And um, those uh, those were very popular back in the day. You can find them on a lot of old equipment. Um, think of yeah, I've got a couple. Oh, I've got a couple Z80 CPUs. I didn't think I had any. We might have to build a Z80 computer one of these days then. Where did I get those from? I've been thinking we ought to build a Z80 machine for a long time, but I didn't think I had any CP... Oh, Lord, I'm losing my mind. All right. Um, there are a lot of surface mount components on this thing, but they're 1206 size, so hopefully, hopefully they won't be too much of a pain in the ass. I do, however, despise surface mount soldering. Um, even if through-hole takes longer to do, um, I think I can do a neater job of it, and therefore I prefer it because I'm mainly retentive. Now, um, like I said, this is a, a, a copy of the, the Apple II um, SCSI card, but it does have some changes. Um, they supply termination power through this little uh, surface mount voltage regulator up here. They did something different on the original Apple card using some parts that are no longer available, so I think that's why he changed that. Solder all these resistors, surface mount resistors and capacitors on here. And uh, I'm not going to film that because A, I suck at it, and B, I do curse occasionally, but if you hear all the cursing that I do while I'm soldering those on, um, my channel will probably get put in a restricted state, and we don't want that, do we? I don't know if this is right, but this is how I do it. Put the thing on there. No flux, no solder, nothing like that. Get it in position. This is a little surface mount capacitor. I can never get them perfectly straight. It annoys the shit out of me. Alright, so once I get it laying on there, then I just put a glob of solder on the end of the soldering iron like this. Right? And then I try to hold the fucking thing down with the tweezers and just tack that one side down to the pad. And it's going to be a shitty joint because there isn't enough flux on there, right? But all we want to do is hold the thing on there right now, right? And then, then we can come in with a little bit of flux, right? And solder the other side. It doesn't take much. I mean, not much at all. We gotta make sure we get the pad hot. Chisel tip helps. I should have put my chisel tip on, but I'm too dumb. Um, and then it, it won't take hardly any solder on this side. I mean, just a tiny, tiny dab of extra. Great way to go with that. That was too much. Too much solder. So, uh, yep, that's how I do it. This side's got about the right amount of solder on it. This side's got too much. We can... There's our 
lovely out of focus surface mount capacitor. I can't get any closer than that to it. Too much solder on one side, other side's alright. The rest of them are all just as ugly. Because like I said, I suck at solder and surface mount stuff. So, uh, yeah, we just gotta put the rest of the little bastards on there. And the same thing with the resistors. And then, then you take a good long break, at least 20 minutes, and you have at least four beers before you continue. Well, all the surface mount, well, no, I haven't put the voltage regulator on there yet. All the surface mount uh, resistors and capacitors are on there. And, uh, I mean, it's uglier than shit, but, uh, as long as it works, I guess. Uh, I haven't done a very deep flux scrub yet. I'll do that after everything else is done, but, uh, everything seems to be all right, I think. Uh, one thing that, uh, confused me for a minute is there's an R14 right here that, uh, isn't on the bill of materials, and that's just a zero-ohm resistor. Um, the deal is, you can either populate this header, so you can set the SCSI ID of the interface card to whatever, or you can just put that resistor on there, and that ties the, uh, SCSI ID of the card to 7 all the time, which is what it should be anyway, so I just put the resistor in there. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to solder is some of the ICs. These uh, basic logic gates, um, I'm going to solder straight onto the board. I'm not going to put them in sockets. Now the RAM, the ROM, the SCSI controller, and the, uh, the PLDs, they're going to get, go in sockets. But um, if you're watching this and following along as you build your own card, why, if you don't have a desoldering gun, just use sockets for everything. Um, it's way too much of a pain in the ass to desolder bed chips without um, one of those guns. It's the, the best thing I've ever spent money on in my life. So, yeah, um, yeah.
on top of state unemployment benefits, which created a weird situation where a lot of people were making more money on unemployment than they did at their actual job. Very discussed their plans to potentially move their arson to Delaware as well. Who knows how that's going to be? It's just a farce to hide his cognitive in the mind. It's amazing. I tested it first in the ROM 1 machine in case it let the magic smoke out. I have a 50 megabyte uh, quantum LPS drive inside of this old 20SC enclosure. And uh, using the advanced hard drive utility like we discussed just a second ago, I created a 10 megabyte ProDOS partition and a uh, 40 megabyte um, HFS partition, although I had to format it as ProDOS for now because I don't have an HFS uh, file system translator installed on the floppy drive, or well, the floppy emu that is running the installer disk. But, uh, now that I've done that partitioning, uh, the ProDOS volume is showing up in the installer now, so I'm going to try to um, install the operating system on this drive now and we'll see what happens. Alright gentlemen, that was kind of a pain in the ass because uh, all of the Apple Talk stuff and different file system translators and Synth Lab and all that stuff all had to be installed separately one by one, but I think I think everything that I could possibly want to have on this drive is now on here and I'm going to power down, unplug my floppy emulator, and see if it boots off of the hard drive. Are you ready, gentlemen? Here goes nothing. Oh my, looky there. Yes, sir. We are rocking. A bit faster than booting off the floppy emu, even. It's uh, kind of surprising. I figured that uh, CF card in the floppy emulator would be a good bit faster than a SCSI hard drive, but I guess uh, I guess maybe the smart port interface is what slows it down. I don't know. A whole bunch of extensions that aren't enabled. This thing has 8 megabytes of RAM. I should be able to run whatever I want. <laughs> So, I'm not particularly concerned about memory usage yet. Oh, there's like 300k um, that I couldn't fit onto a partition. So I guess it's going to bitch at me until I, uh, until I initialize it with something. Now here's our system partition. And... Uh, yeah, cool, and uh, here's the disk that we wanted to have formatted as an HFS volume. Of course, there's nothing on it at the moment, so uh, let's see. Well, first, let's speed the frickin' mouse up. All right, so let's see if we can... Uh, ...initialize that... HFS volume. See, the reason I want an HFS volume to store all of my shit on is because um, the uh, file name uh, restrictions under HFS are a lot more lax than under ProDOS. So, yeah. Alright. Now it is an HFS volume. Very good. HFS is the old Macintosh file system, by the way. And, uh... I mean, everything seems to be working good. Let's run SynthLab. Make some music. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. The internal speaker in these things is pretty shitty. We need external speakers to really appreciate the audio capabilities of the Apple IIGS. Anyway... 
we got our hard we got our SCSI controller assembled and we got a hard drive hooked to it. Life is good. Next I guess we will assemble that phasor. You may be asking yourself, with built-in sound like this, why do we need an audio card that is basically like three voice Tandy audio with some extra voices? That'll be much shittier than the 2DS's built-in sound. Well, uh, we, we need it anyway, and I'll talk about that in the video where we put it together. Alright, rock and roll boys, see you next time.